When you look at incredible space photos like this, this or this, they don't look nearly like this straight out of the camera, or I must say, telescope. The raw photo looks something like this. Surprising, isn't it? And it takes some processing to get it to look even like that and way more processing to get it to look like the beautiful photos that you see. Often, a significant part of this processing is sharpening. I got my hands on this technology that space agencies like NASA with telescopes like James Webb have been using to sharpen their photos. And guess what? You can now use it in Photoshop and all of these photos right here were processed in it. In this video, we're gonna check it out and also see how it works with other applications like portraits or landscapes and how it compares with Photoshop's inbuilt methods or features. So with Without any further ado, I'm excited to check this out. Let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and the name of the plugin is APFR by Kristoff. By the way, Kristoff is an award-winning astrophotographer. And if you want to do the exact thing the plugin does without using the plugin, and if you don't want to use the plugin, I'm also going to share with you a resource on how to do the exact thing absolutely manually in Photoshop later in the video. Once you've installed the plugin, of course, you'll find it inside of the plugins menu, APFR, and there it is. Absolute point of focus. That's what it means. The way it works is pretty simple. First of all, we need to hit preview. This creates a smart object so that you can play with the radius right now non-destructively. You have to take it all the way to the left and slowly and gradually increase it and stop at just the point where you begin to see the blur at about 100% zoom. So let's zoom in at about 100% and slowly and gradually increase the radius. If it's all the way to the left, it's still not blurred. It's still not getting blurred at least. Let's keep on increasing it. And at this point, I feel that there is a bit of blur. So just for an experiment, let's keep it at 1.6. And then you have to decide whether you want to enhance bigger details or extra fine details. If your image has a lot of extra fine details, you may want to choose extra fine right here. Otherwise, fine is fine. <laughs> that uh, sounded good. Anyway, click on sharpen. It will do all of the rest of the calculations absolutely automatically. It's doing that in the background. I'm not speeding up the video and it's done. There it is. Want to have a look at the before and after? Let's zoom in on a detailed section. So here's the before, here is the after. Have a look at the sharpening. It is not just sharpening, but it's also adding depth to the photo. Now this, my friend, is not the end of it. It doesn't look very, very surprising or too dramatic. Let's take a look at what other options we have. Now, once you have done that, you have a couple of results to choose from. They are just different rendering methods and depending upon your image, some may work better than others. So by default, the first one is already activated and it does a standard good result. Works with most of the images. And let's go with the second one. This can be a bit harsh, as you can see, but there is a way to control that. And that is this drop down right here. This is where you can figure out where you want to apply the sharpening to. You can limit it with blend if. If you were to open up this group right here for APFR, this is the main layer that is sharpening everything before, after. If we were to limit it just to the bright areas, how would we do it? We would double click on the right hand side of the layer and take the slider of the underlying layer in the blend if section from left to right. That way it is going away from the dark areas, but this is harsh, right? So hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart and we would take it apart like so. All right, you can hit cancel right here. This is the way we manually did things. But in the plugin, there is a way it will automatically figure everything out and depending upon your style, it can do it. You have different options like APFR1 and then you have options like Center Weighted. This is a much more mild version and you have other versions that will adjust the blend if according to the image. For example, with center weighted, if we open up this group right here, if we double click on the right hand side of this layer, have a look, this is adjusted this way. All right. And that is why it is a bit milder. Hit cancel. If we were to do the same thing in a different image, we're going to get back to this image later. But for right now, just let's sharpen. We're going to go with the second one. And here, if you open up the group, you would notice if we double click on the right hand side of this layer, center weighted is different. So it just proves that it adjusts according to the image. Back to this image, let's go with four. Let's see how it does. This is nice, five, that's nice as well. Have a look at it. Here's the before, here's the after. When you're working with astrophotos and especially space agencies, you cannot manipulate it way too much. Of course, you cannot go to and then just turn off adapt to image. This would be absolutely extreme and it doesn't look good. So it's important to not go too overboard right here. So let's go with center weighted and let's go with five. This looks awesome for this image and we can stop at this one. If you were to ask me, I would just 
set it to APFR1, have a little more sharpness right here, a little more depth, and maybe go with something like three right here. It's a bit more sharper. And then on top of that, you can add some Smart Sharpen. Now let's scroll down. There are some other options right here as well. Of course, you can compare the before and after by clicking here, before, after. It simply turns the layer off and on. And then you can click on Info to see which settings you have applied. And then you can even delete the layer if you wish to. Now, after doing all of this, you have the finalize section where you can just reduce it to one layer, click on it. Now, this looks destructive, but if you have a look at the name of the layer, it has all the settings that you applied, making it easy for you if you wanted to apply it again. But either way, I don't recommend it for me. It's some kind of non-destructive still. What I recommend is converting all of this into a smart object. So let's click on this button. So instead of a raster layer, it is now a smart object. And on top of this directly, you can apply Smart Sharpen because this is already a smart object. Let's go to Filter, Sharpen, and then Smart Sharpen. What I really like to do is increase the amount all the way to the right hand side and then slowly and gradually increase the radius. Let's keep on increasing it and stop at just the point where you begin to see the halos. At about this point, we begin to see the halos right here, as you can see. Maybe let's go with 3.6 or maybe 3.8. Let's go a bit higher. And then you can also reduce the noise if you wish to. Let's keep it at 10. And also the amount is of course all the way to the right hand side. So let's go ahead and decrease it. Let's zoom out. See what works good for us. Maybe we're gonna go with something like 160. Hit OK. That way it is also sharp, crisp and has depth. So here's the before. And here is the after. Look at all the details we just, it feels like we created it. We enhanced them. Here's the before and here is the after. Super cool details right there. Now, as a Photoshop instructor, I have to be honest with you. Now, this is a fantastic technique which is used by James Webb telescopes and all of these space agencies. They want accuracy. And if you want to learn more about this method, we're gonna cover that later. But if you wanna just come close without this much accuracy and this much nuances, you can also try some inbuilt features inside of Photoshop. I'm not talking about just sharpening. Let us do it. Let's make a copy of the background layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl or Command J. Now this is a quick and dirty method. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters. And then let's go to filter, camera raw filter. If you want some details, let's zoom into this area first. Why not just add some texture? Let's go to the effects section and let's increase texture. There you go. That way also you can come up with some details. Of course, you may not have that control of the radius. You may not have that control of different rendering styles, which are used by professionals, but still just creates a lot of details. You can also increase some clarity for more details and maybe some dehaze as well. There you go. And if you want some more sharpening and crispiness, you can go to the detail section and inside of that, just increase the sharpening. You can play with the radius. And by the way, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key to look at it real time. This is where most of it is enhanced. So I'm gonna stop at about 1.6 and then you can control the detail amount. You can keep holding the Alt key or the Option key to see what it's doing. Maybe increase the radius, maybe increase the sharpening and then you can control the masking, but I'm not gonna do that, hit OK. And that was just with Camera Raw. And this is with APFR. Of course, APFR is more accurate and it just looks good but the camera raw is not bad. So you can come close with a simple camera raw. Now, if you wanna learn how this APFR method works, and if you wanna learn how to do this manually, Christoph has created a set of videos. There are lots of videos that you can use to do exact that method, which professionals use, as you can see right here. I'm gonna leave a link to all of this in the description. Grab some popcorn, take the time to watch it. This is what the true professionals do. It's worth it. It is a way more advanced version of the high pass method that we covered several years ago in videos like this. And you can see that if you open up this smart object by double clicking on the thumbnail, here we have the APFR group. Let's open up any one of these by double clicking on it. You see all of these renderings, all of them are stacked and applied together just to add all of those depths and details. Now let's see how it works with portraits like this. So in this case, we have first done the blemish removal and then dodging and burning. Now before applying APFR, let us create a stamp visible layer by pressing Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. This creates a merged layer of everything you see in the canvas at the top. And then let's click on APFR layer and hit preview. Slowly and gradually increase the radius and stop at the point where you just begin to see it blurring. Let's zoom in at about 100%. And I'm gonna go a bit higher on this one. 
probably let's go for 1.6. And then fine is fine and hit sharpen right here. Just have a look at the depth it adds. So here's the before, here is the after. And again, I'm gonna zoom in right here, too much. And you can also compare from right here. Here's the before and here is the after. And of course you can try different rendering methods. Let's go with the second one, more details. Now of course you have different blend if modes. So I'm gonna turn it off for the moment. Let's go through different results right here. Two is way too sharp. Definitely not something we can apply. Let's go with three. Three is fine. Four is good too. Let's see five. I think five is a middle ground and we can go with that. And along with five, the dark areas are way too dark. So maybe we're gonna go with APFR model one. This is a good balance. So here's the before, here's the after. Look at the details. Look at the details in the skin texture. Look at the details in the eyes and the details on the lips before after. It is not adding any halo and that is the greatest part. If you have a look at areas like this, edges like this, usually if you were to add a regular sharpening, it will add some halos. So let's turn this off and we're going to create a brand new layer at the top. Press Control, Alt, Shift and E. And let's compare it with Smart Sharpen. Let's go to Filter, Sharpen and then Smart Sharpen. And you would notice something right here. Let's take a look at this particular area. If we were to control the radius and the amount, you will see some halos at every point. Some level of halos, no matter what you do. Have a look at this area right here. You see the halo? Let's zoom in. You see that disturbing contrast around the edge? Similarly right here as well. You see all of these lines? These are the artifacts and byproducts of sharpening like this. And of course, we have to be careful of the amount right here. Let's hit cancel and delete this layer. If you have a look at APFR, none of those are added, no matter how much APFR you do. So let's go with two right here you will see no halos around the eyelashes right here. No halos around this area right here. It's just a different kind of sharpening. Here's the before, here's the after. Even if you turn it off, you this is extreme sharpening, but you don't see halos that much in that form. So let us go with the fifth one, of course. And then we're going to go with APFR1 to find a good balance. You can combine it, of course, with a little bit of Smart Sharpen. Before that, let us reduce everything to a smart object. We can go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Increase the amount all the way to the right hand side and slowly and gradually increase the radius. And stop at the point where you begin to see the halos. So for me, I'm going to stop at about 3.6. Slowly and gradually increase the amount to what we want. Let's go with 180 here and have a look at the sharpness. This is just amazing. So here's the before. This is way too soft. Have a look at the eye right here. And here's the after. Good balance, but I still think it's too sharp. And that is why we need to go back to Smart Sharpen and probably decrease the amount. Maybe 100% was good. Hit OK. There you go. That is nice. So here's the before. Overall soft. And here's the after. It's popping so nicely. Let's have a look at landscapes. This, my friend, is a pretty good photo, but it lacks all the details because this seems to be so far away. If only we could sharpen these areas and add some more grunge and depth. Let's open up APFR and similarly, click on preview. You want to make sure you're zoomed in at about 100% and slowly and gradually increase the radius and stop at just the point where you begin to notice the blur. I'm going to go 1.2 and fine is fine, hit sharpen. Have a look at it. So here's the before, here's the after. That is pretty conservative. Let's turn it off so that there is no blend if and this is way more detailed. Just take a look right here. Here's the before. Here's the after. And if you see any halos, you can mask it out. But in this case, there are none. It's perfectly fine. And once you're done, of course, let's reduce it to a smart object by clicking right here. This gives us way more flexibility to edit it further, apply some camera or smart sharpen. That is up to us. So is this plugin worth it or do you really need it? Two questions. Let's get to it one by one. First of all, is it worth it? At $50, I think it is a bargain for getting the technology that space agencies like NASA, European space agencies with telescopes like James Webb or the Hubble telescope has been using. It's just an absolute bargain. Plus, I have some discount codes that you can use to get an additional discount on top of that. To know how much and additional details, I'll link them all up in the description. And it does one of the most accurate sharpening with no halos, bunch of detail and a lot of depth. Now, everything that the plugin does can be done manually. And if you want to learn how to do that, I'll leave a link in the description as well. And it is right here as well. Now, do you really need it? If you're an astrophotographer, this is worth a try. Otherwise, if you just simply want to add some texture, some details, you can just increase the texture inside of camera 
and it does a pretty good job. You might not have that many controls, that many rendering options, but this just is a quick and dirty way to kind of get around it. Texture and clarity and a bit of dehaze maybe, that just adds enough. Here's the before, here's the after. But you don't have the control of radius, which determines how fine you want your sharpening to be, which becomes very essential in areas like the skin, where you want to exactly define how the sharpening goes. Increasing the texture slider on the skin uh, can be catastrophic. Also, you don't get access to different rendering styles or the blend if options to control whether you want the sharpening in the shadows or the highlights or how much you want. So I leave that to you to decide. By the way, this APFR plugin is also a part of the creator bundle. So for a fixed monthly subscription, they're giving away 20 tools for which APFR is also a part. So if you're interested in that, you can also check that out. And I've also left discount codes for that as well. Or you can outright buy it. That is up to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope I could share with you something new. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Thank you.